As the forces dispersed and inflation continued during the first fraction of a second, the universe set the perfect stage for a sea of particle and antiparticle pairs popping into and out of existence. We use E equals mc squared to explain that given enough energy and the right conditions, energy can turn into mass in the form of particle-antiparticle pairs. The antimatter particles should, in principle, be perfect mirror images of their normal companions, canceling each other out. Somehow, though, we were left with a surplus of matter over antimatter. Most believe these particles, quarks, and leptons are the fundamental building blocks of everything we know. Some theorists suggest even these elementary specks are composed of tiny, vibrating strings. In any case, observations show that these bits of matter are in constant motion. What's crazier is their movement seem to be completely random. So, to recap, energy spawned from nothing to create our universe and then randomly transformed into matter that continuously and arbitrarily jostles and jitters. It's these same nanoscopic particles that make up a rock, a goat, the sun, you, your phone. Unique configurations of the same thing. How exactly do we explain this matter, though? Our math tells us that the matter pairs cancel out. Well, experiments have shown particles like neutral mesons can spontaneously turn into their anti-meson, and vice versa. Neutral mesons are composed of one quark and one anti-quark. The quark turns into an anti-quark, or the anti-quark turns into a quark. This can happen more in one direction than the opposite, creating more matter than antimatter. Think of flipping a coin. Although there's a 50-50 chance of heads or tails, the outcome is unlikely to always end up with an even split. Sort of like dinner with friends. This and they're like, oh, a couple extra dollars or something like that? You're like, well, I'm $687 short. The business deal gone bad or divorce. <laughs>